we will continue our uh, next topic on basic video lecture the next topic uh, next uh, thing which we are going to discuss is cone so a cone is a very simple structure simple uh, shape which we got it is a three dimensional shape which we obtained by rotating a triangle and especially it is rotate uh, rotating a right angle triangle if i rotate a right angle triangle about one of its axis we will be getting a cone you could see here i am having a right angle triangle here i am having a right angle triangle this is the right angle and this is a right angle triangle and if i rotate about this axis this uh, vertical axis if i am going to rotate in this way you could see if i rotate in this way i am converting a i am converting a two dimensional figure into three dimensional shape which is nothing but cone so base of the base of the figure which we are getting is said to be base and it will be nothing but a circle and top of the cone is called as apex and the dimension the right angle triangle's dimension is taken as the the hypotenuse is taken as l and the height is taken as h and the base is taken as r so from this we can write by using uh, pythagoras theorem l square which is nothing but hypotenuse square will be equal to adjacent square plus opposite square so l will be equal to root of h square plus r square so so next once after forming so if i rotate it completely it will get converted into a cone right so there are two areas for a cone one is base area and one is curved area which is the side area so side area is given as given as pi r into l pi r is the radius and l is the slant height and base area is given as pi into r square so next if we go for the next this uh, the total surface area one is side area one is base area the total surface area or the total area will be nothing but summation of this and this so pi r l plus pi r square and if i take pi r as common it will be equal to pi r into l plus r so now volume volume of the cone is nothing but 1 by 3 pi r square h you have to note one point here it is h it is not l h is nothing but height of the cone so l is slant height h is height and directly from pythagoras theorem we can get l is equal to root of h square plus r square so this is a simple shape and a simple formulas we can proceed to the next shape our next shape to discuss is ellipse so ellipse is a simple structure simple shape the principle or the definition of the ellipse is very simple it is a curve which is similar to uh, similar to that of circle but the change it has two points one is the both the points are called as focus combinedly it is called as foci search that these two points are fixed search that whatever point i take on the curve here i taken a point p even if i take a point here p dash or if i take a point here p double dash or here if i take a point p triple dash wherever if i take a point p and that that point p should be in the surface of the curve which is nothing but it should be on the curve so the distance which is measured from this focus point or which is nothing but f the distance measured from f to p plus p to g will always remain constant or in other sense the distance measured from the one focus point to the outer surface of to the outer surface of the ellipse plus the distance from there to the another focal point will remain same or i could say it in a, in this manner i am standing here i am standing in the focus i am standing in one of the focus and if i move from this point to any point on the curve for example i am moving here i am moving from this point to some point we will take that point as p triple top repeat uh, p triple dash and from f i i moved to a point p triple dash and if i move if first i i just traveled from here to here and now i am traveling from this point to g so this distance f p triple dash plus p triple dash g will be same as that of f p plus p g so the simple fact here is if f p is getting increased then f then p g will get decreased for example here we can see if i move from f to p now from p i am again moving to g so simply you can see here f p is now increased so f p dash is more than that of f p and p g is less than that of sorry p p dash g is less than that of p g so obviously the total distance will remain same but any one of the distance will reduce 
So here, if I want to say it further, it is nothing but F P plus P G will be same as that of F P dash plus P dash G will be equal to if I say it in this manner, it will be F P triple dash plus P triple dash G, which is equal to constant. So simply, if I travel from one focal point to the surface of the ellipse. And from the surface of the ellipse, if I travel back to another fo another focal point, the total distance will be same everywhere. Wherever I fix, wherever I fix the point on the ellipse, the total distance from one focal point to that point plus that point to the another focal point, the total distance will be constant. It will remain same throughout. If I draw, if I draw, uh, if I draw the curve in this manner, then I can call that curve as ellipse. And remember one thing: this focus f. And G will be same. It should not. It should not move. It is a fixed point. But this P point, I can fix anywhere. Such that I can draw the curve. So this is the definition for ellipse. And if I could draw any curve such that if it satisfies this definition, then the curve is said to be uh, ellipse. And F and G are called as focus. Combinedly, it is called as foci. So now, if we, now let us consider that both F and G are placed at the same point. I am going to consider that this f and g are placed at the same point. Now, what will be the curve? So, you could imagine now f and g are here, and if I want to fix any point p on the curve, such that to satisfy ellipse, f p plus p g should be constant, and we know f and g are same. So, f p should be equal to g p, which is nothing but if f p which is nothing but f p cannot get increased and or p g cannot get decreased that is the fact here so if i fix a point p here or if i fix a point p here if i fix a point p p here p here p here wherever i want if this is p dash if this is p double dash if this is p triple dash the distance from f to p should remain same everywhere or the distance from g to p should remain same or nothing but f p is f p is nothing but p g right because because f and f and g are the same point, so f p should be equal to p g is nothing but two times of two times of p g should be constant, or in the other sense, p g is said to be constant. If two p g is constant, then p g should be constant. That is a fact here. So all the point from f or g should be same. So if I if I draw the curve such that all the point from f or all the point from g are same, then that curve is called as circle. So we can say circle is a special type of ellipse, or in the other sense, we can say ellipse is also a special type of circle. Such that in circle the the radius will remain same everywhere, but in ellipse the radius will be changing. From f to p, it will be it is it is getting increased until this point, and p to g it is getting decreased, and after that p to g will get increased, and f to p f to p will be getting decreased. The same way the diameter will be changing everywhere. So that is what I written here. The major axis, that is the axis which is having largest diameter, or in the sense the largest distance in an ellipse, is said to be major axis. From A to B, this complete distance is called as major axis, and the distance C to D, which is smaller, shortest diameter, is said to be minor axis. So this the the exactly exactly these ellipses will be. Symmetric about major axis and minor axis. In other sense, this is minor axis. The distance from minor axis to one end will be same as that of distance from this point to other end. So that is what OA will be equal to OB, which is nothing but semi-major axis, which will be equal to half of the major axis. So in the same way, this point, this uh, minor axis, this ellipse is also symmetric about minor axis. So distance OC will be equal to OD, which is nothing but semi-major axis. So now come now come for the geometry calculation. So if I take semi-major axis as A and semi-major axis as, as B, and I plotted the ellipse in x and y axis, x axis as semi-major axis and and minor axis. Sorry, x axis as minor major axis and y axis as minor axis. And and if I take A to be semi-major axis and B to be uh, semi-major axis distance, then area is given by pi into A into B, pi A into B. So we could we could easily say if A and B are same, it means it's nothing but a circle, right? 
if a is equal to b that is it is having a constant radius or other sense it is having a constant diameter if a and b are same then let us take a b equal to r then we can directly get area as pi into a is r b is r so pi into r square which is nothing but which is nothing but a circle huh. now come for perimeter perimeter it is not easy to determine for ellipse it is also an approximation so i given here approximation sign the perimeter is not exactly equal to 2 pi root of a square plus a square plus b square by 2 it is approximately equal to 2 pi into root of a square plus b square by 2 right so now come for this is the equation of ellipse x square plus a square plus y square by y square plus b square equal to 1 so here i take an a square uh, i take an x square by a square because x axis is taken as major axis and y axis is taken as minor axis so x square by semi major axis square y square by semi semi minor axis square which will be equal to 1 so this is about this is all about ellipse we will proceed to the next shape our next curve is parabola so parabola is also a simple type of curve the definition of parabola is there will be a fixed point a fixed point is called as focus and there should be a fixed line and that fixed line is called as directrix the definition is such that if i choose any point in the curve if i choose any point in the curve the distance from this point that is the distance from foci to the point which i choose that distance which is nothing but this total distance if i take this to be a this distance should be same as that of distance which is measured from this point to directrix and this line should be perpendicular to directrix which is nothing but this should be a and this should also be a so here in my diagram it is not exactly a these two are not exactly equal to a that is uh, by seeing it it is not exactly equal to a but the distance from focus to the point p the point p should be in the curve and the distance from p to the directrix should be same so for instance if i take if i take a distance from p dash uh, if I draw a line from P dash to directrix which is perpendicular to the directrix and if I draw a line from F to P dash if I draw a line from F to P dash then this distance from F to P dash should be same as that of this distance from this point to this point let us take to be O dash that is which is nothing but F P should be equal to P O and F P dash should be equal to p o dash it is not necessary that i should choose only these two points i can choose point wherever i want if i choose a point here and if i if i represent it as q if i choose a point here and if i represent it as a q then then the distance from the focus to the point q should be same as that of distance from this point to this point that is these total distance should be same as that of this distance if suppose that is the case then the curve which we drawn is said to be parabola it's a very simple curve it's very simple definition also the distance from directrix to the point should be same as that of distance from the point to the focus that's it and uh, the fixed point is said to be focus and the fixed straight line is directrix right so now we come for uh, uh, our basic definitions like basic things which you need to know about parabola first one is it is the axis of symmetry the axis of if it is an axis of symmetry obviously the curve above should be same as that of curve below so this this is the symmetric axis and directrix is placed at a at a distance of a from y axis or nothing but from the tip which is said to be vertex the tip of parabola is said to be vertex and from the vertex the directrix is placed at distance of a and we already know that f, f is the focus which is placed placed at some distance and that distance should be also equal to a so simply if i construct a, the, the distance from vertex to focus should be a and the, and the distance distance from vertex to directrix should also be a so then only our condition will be satisfied right for example if i take a point if i take a point at vertex itself if i take a point vert, if i take a point p at vertex itself then only the distance from f to p will be equal to distance from p to directrix so it is necessary that directrix should be placed at a distance of a and the same distance focus should be placed from the vertex 
So on this is a parabola, an equation of this type of parabola where, where the parabola is placed right side of x axis is y square equal to 4 into a into x. It is in the positive side of x axis, so plus 4 into a x. If suppose the parabola is placed in the negative side, which is nothing but here, which I shown here, the parabola is in negative side, then the equation will be y square equal to minus 4 a x. So there will be a negative sign. And this point a focus here will be minus a comma 0 because the focus is placed in x axis and y. So y should be 0 and it is a negative side, so minus a. And here there is a here there is a parabola which is placed in the positive side of y axis and obviously the x square should be equal to 4ay and the focus point is placed on y axis so the focus will be 0 comma a right and here and here the parabola is placed below so x square equal to minus 4ax because of we are placing it in the negative side of y axis negative side of y axis so minus 4ay here negative side of x axis so minus 4ax here positive side of y axis so plus 4ay here positive side of x axis so plus 4ax we place the parabola in the positive side of x here we place the parabola in the negative side of x here i place the parabola in the top side which is nothing but positive side of y and here i place the parabola in the bottom side which is nothing but negative side of y so it is a simple concept of parabola but there is one interesting fact or interesting uh, interesting thing to be noted in parabola so let us discuss about that it's a very simple thing but it's a very interesting thing regarding parabola if suppose if suppose i am constructing a reflector you might have seen in the or you might have studied about reflector in your basic physics just just consider there is a reflector which will reflect which will reflect a uh, rays okay so if I construct a reflector such that the shape of the reflector is parabola, okay. I am considering a reflector such that the shape, shape of the reflector is, if this is reflector and if I construct it such that the shape is parabolic, right, the shape of the reflector is parabolic and let us take, this is to be my focus point, this is to be my focus point and if I pass a ray here, if I pass a I am applying some light rays, okay. If I pass any ray here, obviously we know that reflector's job is to reflect the ray, right? If it is a parabolic shape, see what is going to happen. Ray will come and it will hit the reflector and once after getting hit on the reflector, it will get reflected back but it won't go back in the same side. The reflection will be like this, that is it will direct it towards the focus. Same way, see here. Here there is another ray and it is coming and hitting the parabola and from once after getting reflected, the ray will, ray will reach the focus. That is, it will be getting reflected towards the focus. And now, same again. There is another ray which is coming and it is getting reflected in the reflector and now it is going to meet the focus of the parabola again. If suppose I am sending it exactly through the axis of symmetric, it will get reflected at this point and then it will come back and it will meet focus. So if this is the case, it will come and it will hit the reflector and it will go back to the focus. Same way it will come and it will hit the reflector and it will go back again to the focus. And here the ray will come and it will hit and again it will go back to the focus. So this is physical physical application of parabola if i construct a reflector as a parabolic shape then the rays which will which is reflected from the reflector will be focused exactly at the focus that is which is nothing but all the reflected rays will point towards focus so this is this is about a parabola now we will proceed to the next shape so next curve is hyperbola um, First we will see the definition of hyperbola, then we will proceed with uh, the equations and formulas to be known in hyperbola. So first, hyperbola is a simple curve. Consider a point P. This is the representation of hyperbola. Uh, always the hyperbola will be like, uh, will be come in pair. It is, it is just like a bow. Uh, you might know bow and arrow, right? So in that, if I, if I, if I, if I push the bow for some distance, that shape is same as that of hyperbola. So it will always come in a pair 
and even the same hyperbola has two fixed points one point is f and one point is g it is both points are called as focus as the same case uh, as that of ellipse and parabola but the definition for hyperbola is such that if i take any point if i take any point in the curve here i taken a point p and if i take any point in the curve and if i start to move the curve or if i start to move the point wherever i place the point now i am placing the point here and now if i measure the distance from this to the focus point that is the total distance fp and the distance from p to g that is distance of the point p on a curve on a hyperbola from both the focus that difference between that the difference between the distance will always remain constant not only in this place if i place the p here for example i am placing a p here and uh, let me place the particle p here ah. so now the difference between the distance now what is the difference between the distance this pg minus fp this pg minus fp or this pg minus fp will be constant they will remain same irrespective of the uh, negative sign there might be negative sign positive sign obviously here fp is getting decreased and uh, and pg is getting increased and once it crosses once it crosses fp will start to increase and and pg will start to decrease obviously this that uh, negative sign is not a matter even if you subtract fp minus pg or pg minus fp the magnitude will remain constant throughout this is not only the case for first not only case for the first uh, first pair of hyperbola it is also for second pair of hyperbola so see here in the right side the right side curve i taken a point p and now if i find the difference between this fp and pg or let me take a let me take a point here and if i draw a straight line from f and i am drawing a straight line from g now the difference between fp and pg or the difference between fp and pg will remain always constant in other words i could say the modulus of fp minus gp which is nothing but fp minus gp will be always constant f and g are nothing but the focus of particular hyperbola p is nothing but the uh, the point at which the particle is placed let let me let us let me move the particle wherever i want if this is my point if this is my point then you could see this difference fp minus pg will be same will be same as that of this fp minus pg will be same as that of this fp minus pg so if this condition is satisfied then we will call the curve to be hyperbola so now we will proceed to the next uh, what are all the equations which is related to hyperbola so i have drawn the hyperbola with all the representations see it's uh, it is the hyperbola these two curves are hyperbola which are placed at a distance of a from the y axis and these hyperbola are symmetric about both y axis and x axis that is this one side of one curve of hyperbola will be same as that of other curve of hyperbola and whatever there in the top side will be same as that of bottom side so they are symmetric about both x and y axis and the distance from the distance from y axis is a that is this distance of this point this point a and b are nothing but vertex that is the point at which the curve is touching the x axis is nothing but vertex and the distance from y axis is a and since we are going in the negative side of x axis it is minus a and obviously the point b is a comma 0 and the point a is minus a comma 0 because it is it is in the x axis so y will be 0 and x will be a so i have drawn another line a dotted a dotted line in a blue color and these these lines a dotted line in a blue colors are nothing but asymptotes asymptotes are nothing but the line these lines if i draw a straight line if i keep on extending this if i keep on extending this straight line it will never meet the hyperbola which means the hyperbola will be keep on extending until infinity these two will never meet so these these types of curve which i draw which i draw search that which i draw to a curve search that it will never meet that is this straight straight line will meet the hyperbola only at the infinity which means they both will never meet so these types of uh, curves are called as asymptotes so i drawn a two asymptotes to these two hyperbolas and i can represent that these asymptotes will never meet the hyperbola right so if i draw a straight line from vertex and the same way i am drawing a straight line to the bottom and from here and from here also from the vertex i am drawing a straight line and from here also i am drawing the straight line the distance from the origin to the point the distance from the origin to the point where the straight line is meeting the asymptotes is taken as b 
So whatever the distance is there in the top side, same distance will be there in the bottom side also. The bottom side, since it is in the negative side of y-axis, it is taken as minus b. So very simple, I am drawing a straight line from the vertex and I am just, I'm just extending a straight line from the vertex and the line which meets the asymptotes and the, and the point at which the line meets the asymptotes. So the total distance from vertex to the point is taken as b. So whatever the distance which present in the top sides, same distance should be present in the bottom side also because these curves are symmetric about x axis too. So this is b, so this is minus b, this is a, this is minus a. So this is the representation of hyperbola, the complete hyperbola and obviously we know that f and g are nothing but focus, a and b are nothing but vertex and a is nothing but minus a comma 0 because it is placed at the negative side of x axis and b is nothing but a comma 0 because it is placed at the positive side of x axis. So now come for the equation of hyperbola, it is a simple equation x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1. This equation you would have already seen in ellipse, right? So in ellipse there will be plus, in hyperbola here it is a minus. So this is the only change, in ellipse it should be plus and in hyperbola it should be minus. Just note that point and now come for asymptotes. Asymptotes are nothing but a straight line. So straight line is, straight line equation is y is equal to mx plus c but here it is directly meeting at the origin. So there won't be any constant. So y is equal to m into x. m is nothing but the slope of the straight line. If you could see, this is my straight line and if I want to find slope, the distance will be, if I want to find a slope, this total distance is b and this total distance is a. So slope will be y, b by a. So b by a is the slope. So slope will be b by a. The slope is b by a for the for the curve which is present above. For the curve, if I take uh, if I take below, so this will be my a. That is not going to change, and this will be my this will be minus b, which is negative. So here it will be minus b by a. So two slopes, one is b by a, one is minus b by a. So y is equal to b by a, y is equal to minus b by a. Regarding slopes, we will we will have a separate video on complete concepts of slopes. So presently to explain this, I am giving you the slopes in a in a very in a very small manner. When we are when we are uploading a separate video for slope, in that case, in that time I will explain the slope completely. So here the slope is very simple, nothing but the distance at y-axis by distance in x-axis. So slope is dy by dx. So here it is b b by a is m. So y is equal to m into x. M is b by a for one case, and for this curve, m is minus b by a, right? It is, it is increasing slope and it is decreasing slope, whatever it is. So, 1 is b by a, 1 is minus b by a, right? So, different types of slope we will be discussing in a separate video. We have another type of hyperbola. This is the type, this function is y is equal to 1 by x, which is, which is nothing but a reciprocal function. So, y is a reciprocal of x and if you have equation like this, it represent a hyperbola called as rectangular hyperbola. So, that representation of hyperbola is this. This is rectangular hyperbola and these two hyperbolas are symmetric about axis. It is symmetric about this axis which is nothing but which is at 45 degree to x and y axis. It is symmetric about a line which is at 45 degree to x axis. If you see here, I had drawn a curve. I didn't say that this curve is a parabola, hyperbola or ellipse or whatever it is. I didn't say anything. Then how can I find this curve as an hyperbola or parabola or ellipse? There is a simple uh, thing, there is a simple thing which differentiate between all these three. That is eccentricity. Eccentricity, we already know that there is a fixed, fixed line as directrix and the fixed point is focus. And the distance from this point focus to any point on the curve. This point P may be any point, it is not necessary that it should be here. The distance from focus to any point on the curve divided by the distance from P to G. That is the difference from the, po the point to the directrix and this distance should be measured perpendicularly. Right. This ratio FP by PG is said to be eccentricity and for different, different curves the eccentricity value will differ. For ellipse eccentricity should be less than 1. And for parabola, eccentricity is equal to 1 because we know that as per the definition of parabola, this fp and pg should be same. That is what I said initially when I was starting this video. And hyperbola, e should be greater than 1 and finally for, uh, for circle, e is 0. That is eccentricity is 0. What does this eccentricity signifies? This eccentricity signifies 
how curved this uh, this curve is that is how much curvy it is if eccentricity is more it is less curvy if e increases it is less curvy or in other sense i could say if e increases it will deviate much from a circle circle is zero and as keep on e increasing it will deviating it will deviate more from circle if e is approaching as close as zero it will be as close as circle so we could draw a diagram such that we could draw a diagram which could compare all these so we know that circle is the most curviest and after that is ellipse and ellipse has e less than 1 it is ellipse so after ellipse we know that it's going to be parabola because for parabola e is equal to 1 right and once after parabola it's going to be hyperbola so after parabola it is going to be hyperbola where e is greater than 1 and it is hyperbola if the curve keep on if the curve is if the if you could see from hyperbola to ellipse the curve is keep on uh, uh, the the curves are keep on getting more curvier ellipse it become more curvier and once it reaches circle it will be completely curved but as it keeps on moving in this side as e value keep on increasing and finally if e reaches infinity the curve will become a straight line that is the curve will be a vertical line so this this is the representation of eccentricity what eccentricity physically means eccentricity is nothing but ratio of distance uh, from focus to the point divided by the distance between the point and the directrix that is the mathematically eccentricity is but eccentricity means how curvy if eccentricity is more it is less curvy and if eccentricity is less it is more curvy so when i was starting the video i i started with a cone but uh, you might have a confusion why i am starting the video with a cone because um, cone is something which is completely deviates from all these curves right hyperbola parabola ellipse these are completely different and cones are completely different and why i i started the video with a cone there is a specific reason for that you can see you can see the picture then you will identify the reason so in this picture you can see there is a cone and i made a section different section of a cone if i made a section which is parallel to the base then we are getting a circle first one which is represented in the purple is a circle where i made a so i made a uh, so i just cut at the cone parallel to the base and if suppose if i make if i incline the if i incline the section somewhat more we are getting ellipse and now if i incline it further more i am getting parabola and if it is further more more steeper if it is more vertical then i am getting an hyperbola so this is the relationship between a cone and all the other sections so the circle ellipse parabola and hyperbola are nothing but sections which are cut from the cones so hence these all curves are also called as conic sections so conic sections so it is a very simple relation so that is the reason why i started this video with a cone and after that i proceeded to different shapes so just cut the cone in a different different angle if we cut it in a different different angle we will get a different different shapes different different curves this video has been made because it was a it was a request from one of our subscriber so what i was supposed to do is i am just asking asking who whom so ever who are watching this video they can post their comment here and uh, if you want more more such types of videos what 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 else you need what else you need in basic mathematics or whatever topic you need to discuss you can post you can post your comment here and uh, whichever possible we, we will start we will start to we will start to do the video as soon as possible so so that's all about this video we will see in the next video thank you